Welcome back to the South End Zone. Of course, we normally are just like off the top, Georgia, LSU, whatever happened or has happened. We already did those earlier this week. So now what we have to do is we have to get into some of the other SEC games and some of the slate outside of the SEC because this college football season is getting crazier and crazier as weeks go by. Um, one that was not that crazy. I kind of expected this. Um, although I think we were all still kind of thinking like, I don't know, maybe there's still another rabbit in the hat for Vanderbilt. But South Carolina playing very, very well of late. They go and take care of business. Um, Diego Pavia, not 100%. And you saw the 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 outcome there with South, South Carolina winning that game by three touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, like we said, Diego Pavia has willed Vanderbilt to everything they've earned so far mm -hmm. this year. He's playing on what looks like to be maybe one good leg, if we, if we could even say that. Like, yeah. you talk about the heart, and you can't – that's something like – I mean, I'm going to sound so cliche, but it's true. You can't mm -hmm. measure that. I always think about, like, you know, the Max Duggan of, like, you know, TCU, where he literally was willing his team to win regardless of how the rest of them were playing. Right. It's the same thing. Like, Pavia is going to put his – heart and soul on the field no matter what the situation is you got to respect that playing um at school like vanderbilt um, i think this does a lot for them like this this season is going to do a lot for them in terms of recruiting i think clark lee is oh, the yeah. best thing to happen to vanderbilt and you're talking about a team that once upon a time had james frank <laughs> as their head coach mm -hmm. and you know you're talking about you know Derek mason you know through the she struggled as their coach too mm -hmm. um I still think he was good. I just think I it think was just, so too. It's, it's hard. It's really hard there. They had and a good I will say this: no offense. You talk about think, Derek Mason. Yeah I, yeah, I think what I'll, what I'll say too is I think this is what you're seeing right now out of Vanderbilt. This is like this is kind of peak Vanderbilt. You know, we talk, we make fun of you know Arkansas, Texas A&M, yeah. Mississippi State because they they have this thing where they can be good enough to spoil but yeah. they're never actually good enough to win anything. Mm -hmm. They never they never make it to well. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> shouldn't Mississippi, say never. State, Mississippi State actually won the West one time. And Arkansas <laughs> actually won the West one or maybe two times. Yeah. Texas A&M never won the West. Um, never went to the SEC championship game. And God willing, they won't make it again this year. Um, go Horns. Um, but anyway, yeah. that's I digress. I know it's hard to bring myself to anyway. say that. But anyway, but this is kind of. I think Vanderbilt is start if if they can do anything, it's enter into that realm, which is better than being the the, Bowl the doorstep, the doorstep <laughs> that you stomp all over and dust yeah. your feet off to get into the SEC. No, like they're bowl eligible now. And while this may be their peak of like this is the most you can expect, is like hopefully here at Vanderbilt we can go eight and three, eight and four, um, you know, nine and three, eight and four, something like that. Um but you know, losing to a Georgia State and then getting your butt beat by a, a team like South Carolina, very good team, but it's just not. It, it's hard to sustain the type of success that they've had. Mm -hmm. a, a narrow loss to Texas um, in Nashville, beating Alabama in Nashville, and uh, just some of the other things that they've that they've done to get themselves to where they are. You you look at it now, and it's like, okay, yeah, this is about. This is like they were playing really over their heads. And they shout out to Clark Lee for getting them there. But mm -hmm. I don't know that we can really talk about this as though like the next step in the progression is contending for an SEC title. I just think that like <clears throat> you talk about like, like, you know, you have a hierarchy of the SEC. And I think mm -hmm. Vanderbilt's just going to do like is going to. When we, when we talk about like, you know, the BCS system where it's like in the bowl system. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, you know, we're talking about SEC 8 is playing Big Ten like 3. You know what I right. mean? And you talk about Vanderbilt being, they might be SEC 10 or 9 right. or 11 or 12, but like that competition, like they still bring that fire. Yeah. You know, like they're, like they're bringing up the rear in like a weirder way because like they're mm -hmm. actually like not bad anymore. They're not terrible anymore. Right. I would say. Like it's, just, it's just nice to see a school where it's like, they're not going to bullshit you. Like academics is where they yeah. live. Like, and it's like, that's not your typical SEC school. It's like, yeah, all these kids football is just a way to fund their education <laughs> to where they will then become some successful, you know, somebody in science or business right. or something like that. It's like, Oh, like they really are truly student athletes still at Vanderbilt. Right. right. It's almost like that. 
I wouldn't say a breath of fresh air, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. you know, it's like the well, fact that they're good makes it that it's just fun to watch them be good. What would be a really good breath of fresh air is having one of those teams that's, you know, SEC 9, 10, 11, wherever it ends up being. Because we already talked about you could have like a one loss team in the SEC championship and then a seven way tie for second place. Yeah. And then you get down and then it's like now you start to get into the Arkansas, uh, the Kentucky, the Vanderbilt, you know, into that range of, of teams Missouri and whatnot so like you could you could actually have this team be like SEC 12 or 11 but they're gonna bring it because mm-hmm. for them like that's like their Super Bowl they finally get to go to a bowl game and they find you know what I mean like there's an appreciation that I think they would have that maybe if Auburn became bowl eligible you might not get that same level of energy and mm-hmm. and like oh, discipline no. in a bowl game. Mm. So shout out to Vanderbilt, shout out to Clark Lee. I just I'm, I'm tempering the enthusiasm because I yeah I think I think this is kind of the cap of like yeah, you know like maybe maybe you can get through the SEC only losing three SEC games. Yeah. Um, and hopefully you don't lose an out of conference game to somebody like Georgia State along the way. But um, one team that did not go undefeated in their conference. And and they beat the the Vanderbilt of the ACC, or they, they lost to the Vanderbilt of the ACC. They lost to Georgia Tech. The Ramblin' Wreck Those knocks nerds. off Miami. We talked about it last week, Tyler. Miami's a fraud. It's no fraud. November. Now we already went through our two teams, which very well may be like in fraud category. I don't know. Maybe if we had played Miami's schedule up to this point, we'd both <laughs> be undefeated, just like they were until this weekend. Um, unfortunately, we have we have to go play Alabama and Ole Miss on the road. In Texas, in your in your case, and for and us, Texas. We had, yeah, and Texas, yeah, you had to play Texas on the road too. Yeah, I, I forgot you played like your three toughest games on the road. We certainly uh, have. Yeah, the SEC. Yeah. You know, people talk about cupcake schedules. I know we're talking about this game, but people talk about Georgia on a cupcake schedule, brother. Yeah. We had to go play three three top ten teams on the road on the in road. conference. Yeah, like Listen, in the pouring rain in Oxford, we had to go play that game. Like, not, not making excuses, like we lost, but like still. No, but you know who does make excuses? All of the media when they talk about Miami and Cam Ward. And this is why I got off the Cam Ward Heisman hype. We were on it. We were, we were way we were, back. We were like, on three it three weeks ago. Listen. Three weeks ago, I was like, I'm off of this. Yeah. I'm not impressed. They're they're playing nobody. Why are they playing with their food like this? Why are they in these games where it's like and so and it's not all just like oh Cam Ward's putting up fifty, but they're giving up sixty. No, like they scored twenty three points against Georgia Tech. Cam Ward was turning the ball over. Cam Ward was uh, missing guys open and and not completing passes when when they needed it. Um, Georgia Tech came to play, and this is what we've been talking about: is that like this Miami team to listen to these announcers and listen to some of the hype around and everything. They talk about the way that he's willing his team to stay in the game and come back against Georgia tech. Yeah. Not Alabama, not Georgia, not Ole Miss, not Texas A&M, not Texas, not Tennessee, not LSU. No against Georgia tech, Virginia tech, Duke, Louisville. I I mean, am I wrong? Cal, Cal, They were down by like three God. touchdowns. To I know. Yeah, they had to come back. Like, they've had to come back against an ACC schedule, brother. Like, give me a break. The the conference is trash, and you're playing around with it like like he's some like he's freaking Joe Montana because he he came back from down three touchdowns against the Browns. Like, no, bro. Like, this is not impressive. You and and now finally they got exposed. And if it's up to me, if they don't win the ACC. Don't let them in the playoff, dude. See, that's, at this two point, lost, that's, that's how they get Miami, in. Eliminated. Two lost this, Miami. Out. Yeah. At this point, that's the only way they're going to get in is if they win the ACC, and that mm-hmm. doesn't even seem likely. And then, yeah, no. the ACC is the, the SEC may be like chaotic and on fire, but because we're actually all good, the ACC mm-hmm. is chaotic and on fire because I don't even know. Like it's it's a dumpster fire. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a it's a weird. It, I, it's not necessarily a dumpster fire. It's just there's some unexpected stuff happening. Yeah, a lot of Tony Express stuff. is back with SMU, <laughs> and and there there were some other teams that you thought might challenge for it that are disappointing. But uh, there's a very good possibility you could see 
a, a Clemson versus uh, SMU mm-hmm. ACC title game. Which would honestly be cool. It would be very cool um, because then Miami wouldn't be in it. And also- I don't know. I don't know that Miami uh, wins out because if they if they're going to play around with these teams that they sh- if they're as good as they're touted to be, they should be beating by three touchdowns. Then I, I think any any game is fair game. So uh, one team that hasn't been playing with its food has been Indiana, Indian. and I put Indian. Uh, that's all right. We're going to fix that. But uh, look, man, my uh, my typing skills aren't uh, on point this morning, but we're, we're all right. We it's a it's a live show. We it's keep okay. it rocking, and as long as it'll actually save it and let me put it up on the screen. There we go. Hey, Indiana. You didn't see um, anything. Indiana beat Michigan twenty to fifteen. Michigan had a chance to win this game, but uh, but Indiana's defense came up big. And I I will say this: um, this is like one of the first big tests that Indiana's had. And while we've made fun of Michigan's offense for not being able to move the ball, like this is still a, a good defense. This is a team that beat USC. Right. Um, they beat, they've, they've, they've won some games. They are the defending national champions. A lot of those guys, there's still, there's a, a level of pride where an undefeated Indiana, um, you know, you, you have a chance to like make a stamp on your season. Mm-hmm. And so there's a drive that I think, and now Indiana is ha- they, they I'm not going to say that they're like Ohio State or Oregon where they have that kind of target on their back but when you're undefeated and people are talking about you possibly winning the conference you're one of those like get healthy type of opponents where like okay if we can knock these guys off and give them their only loss this season it kind of makes some of the stuff that we suffered through earlier in the season go away a little bit or at least mm-hmm. it it it, dump, it numbs the wound a little bit so yep. Shout out to Indiana. Keep you you survive in advance. This is this is not like Miami beating Virginia Tech, Cal, and all these other like this is Indiana's been beating the brakes off of everybody. And then they finally had a little bit of a tussle. Um, I think probably healthy for them because now that game against uh Ohio State, they're gonna come ready. They know they have some things that they know they need to work on. And the only thing is, you know, maybe Michigan exposed some things that Ohio State can exploit. Yeah. But uh, I don't know if Indiana maybe took this one for granted a little bit, but uh, it was a much more hotly contested game than I expected. I did. I did expect Michigan to cover the 14 and a half, mm-hmm. but I didn't think we were going to be looking at Indiana possibly losing this game. on the last Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. That's so. what I mean. Indiana, like you said, innocent, total proof and guilty with Indiana. You keep on winning right. and nobody can, none of us can, nobody can say nothing about you. If you keep winning. So this, yeah. this team has not gone undefeated, but they almost did. And uh, uh, it's time to, Time to throw on the hat. Look, LSU lost. The hopes are still alive. I'm still going to keep the hopes alive. But as of right now, I am uh, I'm alive and well on the Boise State hype train. Oh. Um, 28 to 21, they get it done against Nevada. Their only loss this year is against Oregon in Eugene. And it took a punt return for a touchdown and a kickoff return for a touchdown and a field goal at the horn to beat Boise State and Ashton Janty, who had over 200 yards and three touchdowns in that game. He had over 200 yards and three touchdowns in this game, 34, 209, and three. Um, Ashton Janty getting it done. I'm on the Ashton Janty uh, Heisman hype yeah. train. Ever since you uh, brought him to our attention week one, where you're like, yo, did you see what Ashton Janty did against, I don't even remember who they were playing, but it was. Uh, I forget. It was our opening game, and I forget. It was too, like Georgia like, Southern, yo. maybe? Georgia I'm like, Southern? Or, I'm like, yo, Chad, like I just heard about this dude, but we got to. We, we gotta pay attention, <laughs> right? So uh, I I'm here to tell you, like, we're gonna pull up the standings here real quick um, because I don't understand what these idiot voters are actually thinking. Because yeah, watch, yeah, the AP poll, they 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 really don't know. Like, okay, so Oregon, Ohio State. I mean, I don't know. Is, is it? Wait, no, this can't be right. This has to be. This is old, bro. Where's the week twelve? They haven't done it yet. Have they not? Yes, I'm telling you. Oh, this is the playoff rankings. My bad. So AP, why well, we can't do AP? Oh, uh, that's what it is. We we don't even have the rankings because. Okay, the so they have people. Yeah, but the, the AP isn't updated either because there's no way you guys are number two. <laughs> no, it's not. I I, had, I don't know. I can't share my screen, but it oh, has here we go. I got it. I got it. I got it. Hang on. Let me uh give me this. They have the here. they have the week twelve coaches and the AP poll up. Yeah, so uh, Georgia's eleven, 12. Miami's yeah. twelve. 
Yeah, my apologies, people. I'm uh, I'm having my issues with technology this morning. Okay, so yeah, so uh, Oregon, Ohio State, then Texas, Penn State, Indiana, Tennessee, BYU, Notre Dame, Alabama moves up to nine after beating LSU. Ole Miss moves up to 10 after beating Georgia. Georgia's right there at 11. Somehow Miami is still ranked ahead of Boise State and SMU, even though SMU is better than Miami in the ACC. Boise State's better than Miami overall. And then you have Texas A&M, who I would say is better than Miami based on what they've played, the schedule that they played. They lost to Notre Dame, who you have at number eight, and they lost to uh, South Carolina, who you have at number 23. Um, so I I don't know. And LSU is all the way down there at 21. But, yeah, I'm uh, – to me, Boise State should be up in the top 10, maybe even top five. Um, they, on top of the fact that they nearly beat the number one team in the country, lost by a field goal after a kickoff return and a punt return, kept Oregon in the game. They had the lead late in that game by a touchdown and Oregon came back and, and tied it up and then hit the field goal to win it at the horn. But also Washington state who is ranked number 19 right now, they're eight and one, you know who their one loss is to Boise state. <laughs> so listen, give these dudes their due, give them their respect. Um, Ashton Janty is the man. Teams are loading up the box and they're still just handing it to him to the tune of 34 carries for 209 yards and three touchdowns. I don't think he's going to catch Barry Sanders' record because he's got like three games and he's got to put up like 900 yards in three games. What's that? It's, it's still possible, but man. <laughs> I'll tell you this much. If he does it, he's winning the Heisman. Dude, he was scaring <laughs> Barry's record for a while. And that's like the was. Like, when we talk about running back, like the way like the the game emphasizes like the spread offense, mm -hmm. like, airing the ball out, like in 2024. Like it's just in the last like 10 to 15 well, years. Look, the fact just, that we're giving this running back the yeah. ball this often and he's getting it done. Mm -hmm. This frequently with this success rate, like and he's just like it's different. Like we don't we haven't seen because nobody gives a running back the ball this much anymore to see a guy right. even remotely have a to, to scare Barry Sanders record. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But, like, but I'll, I'll, so I'll say this: um, the 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 sheer math of how offense works in football mm -hmm. makes it to where a quarterback is going to automatically have the the most production. Yep. Period. End of story. Mm -hmm you realize how hard it is for a running back who has to take the ball behind the line of scrimmage and run through the line to get positive yardage, mm -hmm. how hard it is for him to run the ball for more yards than a dude who stands behind that line and just throws the ball to another dude who's running without the ball yeah. and he just has to catch it. Yep. I'm just saying like, it, it's, it's way easier to put up 500 yards passing than it is to put up 300 yards rushing. True. <laughs> yeah. Insanely easier. It's far easier to put up 400 yards passing than 200 yards rushing. Yeah. It's really hard to run the ball for the, the volume mm -hmm. and the production that he's, he's putting up. And the, you compound that with the fact that they are loading the box up. They're putting eight, nine dudes in the box. Yep almost every play. And that's why Boise State has some success through the air because they're just like, look, man, I'm not just going to keep running you into a brick wall all day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm, it's, it's stupid. If they want to do that. All right, fine. Play action, go over the top, boom, touchdown, play action, go over the top, boom, touchdown. Now they're hanging 56 on somebody. And then at the end of the day, you still look at it and it's like, Oh, Ashton Janty only had uh, 19 carries for 128 and two touchdowns. Yeah, bro. Only? That, that's only, yeah. Only. only? Like, come on, bro. And then you, so, and then you, you have those set of games where I think three in a row where he didn't get to 200 yards. Yeah. That really, that when you've got to average like two, 250 a game to yeah. get the record, having half that for three games in a row is going to be really tough. So, but we're still keeping our, uh, our hopes alive for him. One guy who, definitely kept his hopes alive for the Heisman trophy um, was a uh, Travis Hunter, not as good a production as maybe he would have hoped, but he did enough and he made the key catch uh, at the end of that game to kind of to, to, well, to take the lead. And then they, they just kind of closed it out and, and ran away from Texas tech. Colorado's legit. They're in the hunt yeah. for that big 12 championship game. And if they get to the big 12 championship game and it's like them against 
uh, BYU or whoever. I, I I see it being BYU at this point. Yeah. Um, BYU Colorado's only got lose. one loss. BYU is undefeated. So that seems like the collision course in that conference anyway. And so this, this sets up to be a, a potentially very interesting Big 12 race. And then, man, what happens if – Let's say Colorado knocks off BYU in the Big 12 championship game, gives BYU their only loss. Do you keep a one-loss BYU out of the playoff? I say no. I say you. I say if yeah, I say I here's what I'll say: if BYU sweeps the board mm-hmm. and wins the Big 12 championship, you may only see, you could possibly only have them being the lone Big 12 team in. Right. I could easily because there's so many other teams that are making a mm-hmm. case. Um, however. Um, if Colorado goes all the way and wins the Big 12 championship, I could see them maybe making BYU like that 11th team. Maybe. Mm. All right. I see, I, I see it. I mean, you could play out predictor it with the uh, whatchamacallit. But, well, no, uh, but I, so I don't want to do that right now because it's it, there's some things that, that it can't possibly yeah. compute right now. Yeah. And, and it, the biggest one is that SEC tiebreaker. Yep. So – when it comes time to put somebody in the SEC title game, just hear me out. What if you end up with that scenario I told you about where mm-hmm. it's the Texas, Texas A&M winner, mm-hmm. one loss is in the title game. And then you have the loser of that game tied with Tennessee. If you guys went out, you would beat Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And if Tennessee wins all the rest of their games, Tennessee would have two losses. Georgia would have two losses. Ole Miss, two losses. Alabama, two losses. LSU, two losses. Uh, Missouri, two losses. Am I missing somebody? Let me see. Um, It would be – no, that's everybody. Missouri, LSU, Ole Miss, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, uh, the Texas A&M, Texas loser. That's seven two-loss teams. (laughs) And the tiebreaker – you could end up with whoever wins that tiebreaker. And let's say it is somebody like LSU who right now is on the outside looking in. And they beat the Texas Texas A&M winner to win the SEC championship. Now you have eight two-loss SEC teams. And you've got to figure out which four or three or five to put in there. And it comes down to, okay, LSU with three losses overall, but only two SEC losses and wins the SEC title. I'm just just a pure hypothetical mm-hmm. because this season has been so crazy. Nothing would surprise me at this point. Right. Um, and I'm also like hoping that it happens. But um, but what if that happens? Now you have a three loss SEC champ as a buy in the first round. Or maybe they end up getting the they're, they're, they don't have a buy, and you have your other conference champions. How crazy would that be if one of the if the SEC champ doesn't have a buy? That'd be wild. <laughs> despite playing, despite playing <laughs> probably the the toughest schedule in football, mm-hmm. if you win the SEC, whoever wins the SEC will, if it's not Texas, will likely have had one of, if not the toughest schedule in football. Yep. Um, yep. So let's say you let's say that happens, you do that, and then. All these other two loss teams, which would be um, everybody else who has two losses in the SEC has no other losses outside of the SEC. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Texas A&M would have. Two. So if it's LSU, Texas A&M in the title game, then LSU would give Texas their third loss overall and their second SEC loss. So you probably it, that would probably eliminate Texas A&M from the conversation. Mm-hmm. But – then you have all these other teams. You have six or seven other teams all, like, vying for three, maybe four spots. Do yep. you put a BYU in, yeah. in the playoff ahead of them? I, I don't, don't know, know that you do. Only if, if, they, if BYU yeah. loses. It, it, you know, and it may just be, like, the Big 12 gets one and only spot and it's their champ, like, regardless mm-hmm. of who mm-hmm. ends up being. Yeah, and that's, that's just because of, like, the, the level of competition and, and yep. play in their I, conference. That like, and the ACC, I, I see possibly going the same way. Yeah, because I mean, I think the ACC might get two, depending on it's who gonna, wins the it's championship. Got to be the right. It's got to be the right two, though. It That's definitely does. It, like it has to. Like the stars have to align, and like the mm-hmm. right person has to, like the right two teams, depending yeah. on who it is, 
it could be the two teams that are in the ACC championship. Yeah, it could be, absolutely. or it could be like a secret third team who's not involved, like because of their record turning out the way. Mm-hmm. Like if something crazy, because the well, it can't be Clemson. It can't be Clemson because they've already got they've already got two losses and, and three on three on the season, so they're out of everything. Um, Wait, do they have two ACC losses? Uh, I yeah. they only had the no. no. They only had the Louisville loss and the loss to you guys. Didn't they just didn't Virginia? Am I crazy? I mean, no, no, have, no, no. They beat Virginia. By tech. like ten oh. points, oh, Virginia yeah. Tech. Okay, or Virginia Tech. I'm sorry, not Virginia. Yeah, okay. Virginia so they did win that game. I don't know why. Yeah. Like, it, like ignore me, everybody. Here's how much I pay attention to ACC football. No, it's fine. Um, like, I, I assumed Clemson was going to lose that game um, because why not? They're Clemson. Oh, yeah, they're playing like that. Maybe they lost it in but, my uh, head. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. no, they're seven and two overall, six and oh, one okay. in the ACC. My so. fault. So like, there's a no there's worries. a chance that. So yeah, I think the ACC gets two at most if they're lucky. Mm-hmm. And the Big and I think, 12, regardless, I think the Big 12, two, two, or, two at most, two at most, if they're lucky, and it's probably just one. ACC has a better chance of getting two because it's, you know, if Miami wins the whole thing, you're probably only getting Miami. If yeah. somebody else wins it, you could potentially get two teams. It's like, about who say, the conference still wants. It's like say, so they still want Miami, and but somebody else wins, right. and they might, you know, they might get two. Well, if – or if it's if SMU Miami end up in the title game, Clemson doesn't have to play in it. Clemson sits there with two losses, one of them to Georgia opening weekend and one a tough game against Louisville. But then they have the SMU Miami loser is knocked out. Well, now you have the winner is is in. And then maybe they sneak Clemson in as like an 11 or 12 seed. It could happen. But then you're you're really looking at the Big Ten and the Ace and the SEC competing for four, I mean, competing for eight or nine spots total. Um, and you have your group of five as your other, you know, whether that's Boise State or, um, I, I mean, really at this point, I it's like say, Boise State. It's pretty I much love, Boise State. <laughs> I love that college football has given us this much scenario to talk about. Mm-hmm. As opposed to like, oh, this is a foregone conclusion. That's a foregone conclusion. None of it yeah. really is. Like we have the only, and that's not to say that they won't stub their toe. I mean, they probably right. won't. But the only person who has any secure future is Oregon, and that's yeah. like, and as long as they don't stub their toe, like that's the only person with a secure future right now. Maybe Oregon. Texas. Maybe, Maybe Texas. Texas. Because if Texas win, yeah. If Texas wins. If Texas wins out. They could lose the SEC championship game, still get in. Yeah. If they lose to A and M, they won't play in the SEC championship game, so they're still in. Yeah. So I think I think as long as they don't lose outside of yeah A and M or the SEC championship game, I think Texas is in. So you may you have um, two te- one team, maybe two teams that have like mm-hmm. a semi secure yeah. future. The rest of college football is as about as chaotic as it could possibly be, and we. Here at the South End Zone, loves that so, so 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 much. And the craziest part about all of that is the team that we that we hardly talk about as, as being like a virtual lock is actually Penn State. <laughs> if they just if they just win, they're they're not playing anybody who's yeah. going to put them in jeopardy. Indiana has to beat Ohio State, and then if they don't, mm-hmm. they've got to they've got to potentially you know wait and see and hope that some things happen because I don't know if they lose the one big game that they're going to get that same kind of credit. I think they're probably in regardless, but uh, yeah, it's, it's not. Penn it's State not, was built. The The 12 team playoff was built for Penn State. It was Penn built State, for yeah. a, t- a Penn State style team and, you know, a Notre Dame. Uh, like they're always going to be like in that six through 12 spot, but probably mm-hmm. never going to probably. Listen, Penn State could fall ass backwards into the conference championship if some things fall align the right way. Yeah. But like they, they might be better off just winning out and then not even playing in that not game. Not playing in it. Yeah. <laughs> and then they yeah, have the, the one loss to Ohio State. Well, that's it. So uh, I, I I really don't see it happening though. I, the way yeah. I see this going down is Oregon wins out because Oregon mm-hmm. doesn't really have any substantial games left. The Ohio State Indiana winner is the other team in the Big Ten championship that's game. That's fair. That's a good and point. And Penn State doesn't have to play in it. Yeah. Um, so that's just that's just how I see that cookie crumbling because Penn State would lose the tiebreaker to Ohio State if it's Ohio mm-hmm. State, and there's not even a tie if Indiana beats Ohio State. So that's that's fair. 
Anyway, one last one. Kansas beat up Iowa State to secure um, Iowa State's failure to win the Big 12. So um, it's now like a, a two-horse race between Colorado <laughs> and, uh, and BYU. BYU. So, uh, you know, I don't know what to expect um, down the stretch, but there's a lot to a lot to get ready for, a lot to be uh, hyped up for as we close out. No fraud November. Uh, a lot of frauds will be exposed. We will continue. I'm sure this this whole playoff picture will continue to get jumbled around and, and mixed up, um, remixed as we go. We will get to you a little bit later in the week with a preview for week 12. Um, LSU's got to get off the mat and go into the swamp and try and take care of business against Florida. Um, who do you guys Tennessee. have? Tennessee coming up. <laughs> it only gets more brutal. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! You have the worst schedule possible. possible. Oh but, but the only, the only bright part is are coming to Athens. That's like, shockingly yeah. enough. Oh yeah, yeah, all of our toughest opponents were all on the road this year. Like I it, wish, I wish, uh, I wish Alabama coming to Baton Rouge would have mattered, but um, yeah, apparently it didn't. It just, it was just a an op- an opportunity for us to be even worse embarrassed. Yeah. Um, so it was just oh. ugly. But anyway. We appreciate everyone coming through and sticking around this long. If you have, don't forget to like, to share, to subscribe, send us your comments. Uh, it's look, this is your time. Piss on our graves. We're we're here to take it. Like we're men, we can stand up for it. Yeah, we'll live. <laughs> we we love our teams, and we know they got their asses handed to them. It is what it is. We move on. We keep pushing, and we're trying to keep this collision course going because we still think LSU and Georgia might meet in the playoffs. LSU is going to have to have a miracle happen to get there, but. It's still possible, so we're going to make it happen. Tyler, don't cancel your uh, work switcheroo because we're still going to Atlanta, all right? (laughs) But for now, we're getting the hell up out of here. Peace, y'all. It's the South End Zone. I'm Chad. He's Tyler. We'll see y'all next time.